Hi guys. It is a cold, gloomy, nasty winter day here in the in mid-October here at uh, the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York on this gloomy, nasty, I believe it is Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, two weeks away from the beginning of Mad Max here. Uh, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and this is my little uh, Christmas elf, Sancho Panza. And we've been away for a couple of days. It's taken us two days to figure out how to get the propane, the fracked propane furnace up and running by global industrial civilization wins again. You can uh, hear that in the background and so perfect segue and this, and this propane furnace you hear whirring in the background is an absolutely perfect uh, backdrop to today's chronicle of the collapse. I've actually been sitting on this uh, chronicle for a couple of days because I just don't have the stomach Forward. I'm going to try to get through some of this. I, I, th this rant could go on for hours. I was just listening uh, a little while ago to one of my colleagues here in the Doomosphere. I can't remember who this guy is, but you know, one of these guys down here in the Doomosphere uh, talking about this article a couple of days ago. Uh, from USA Today uh, talking about how electric vehicles are going to save the planet. That uh, they were, you know, it's, I guess someone on Facebook had posted uh, that electric vehicles in fact were not going to save the planet. But, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't the USA Today, it was business was it USA Today or Business Insider, one of those? It was USA Today uh, claiming, no, Facebook, uh, you were wrong. That electric vehicles are, in fact, going to save the planet. And we had that story, and now we have this uh, thing showing up a couple of days ago. I am embarrassed to say from, uh, from Politico, Politico. Uh, I guess this, let's see, written by Zeke Housefather and Alex Tremba, who I guess are speechwriters for Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris. Is it Kamala or Kamala? I've never known how to pronounce that woman's name. But anyway, they must be speechwriters for Biden and company. Um, you know, Joe Biden just making it completely clear for the record that he has zero intention of banning fracking. Anybody who thinks that uh, voting for Joe Biden over Donald Trump is going to end up in a fracking ban, which of course we enjoy here in New York thanks to uh, St. Uh, St. Andrew Cuomo, uh, but of course the propane that I'm using in New York probably came from a Pennsylvania fracking site uh, 10 miles from here. But anyway, uh, right here in Politico, I, I, I am just, uh, anybody who wonders why we are doomed, asking the question, could fracking, could fracking actually help the climate? Could fracking actually help the climate? Okay, guys. Uh, is there any confusion? First, let's just answer the question. Uh, could fracking actually help the climate. Well, you know, I guess that depends on what your goal for the climate is. Uh, just, just the fact that Politico is, is even putting up something this absurd uh, 
And 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 as I say, I I, I could sit here and, and and tear this descent into idiocy apart, word by word, line by line. But uh, I, I just don't have the stomach. Like, we'll see how far I get. I will put the link on here. Uh, you can go on here and read one of the most absurd stories uh, th that has appeared probably ever in Politico. Uh, all right. Could fracking actually help the climate? <clears throat> Hydraulic fracturing. The controversial oil and gas extraction method, usually called fracking, has divided Democrats and the political left yes, for a decade now. Many in the environmental community claim that allowing fracking is incompatible with climate action. Others, including Joe Biden and Kamala Kamala Harris take a more nuanced, a more nuanced position on fracking. During their respective, de respective debates, both Biden and Harris emphasize that a Biden-Harris administration would not ban fracking. Wow! as this nuanced debate. This is just, what was the word that USA Today was uh, talking about? Com complex, I think, is uh, what they were talking about. You know, they were pointing out in that article how it takes 500,000 Pounds. Is it 500,000 pounds or 500,000 tons uh, of raw materials to be dug up out of this planet to produce one electric car battery? But they're saying before you jump to the conclusion that it is a bad thing for a planet uh, to dig up 500,000 pounds of this planet to produce one electric car battery, uh, you need to look at the complex issue. There is nothing complex about it. Okay? Just like there is nothing nuanced uh, about the debate among the left uh, over fracking, whether fracking should be banned. This is not, I, I, I don't give a damn how Politico or Joe Biden's speech writers or whoever try to frame the fracking debate as a nuanced debate. Uh, so then, kind of like USA Today did in, in their article, uh, th this is Politico doing the same thing, trying to convince any clueless moron uh, out there that fracking is a good thing for planet Earth. So we can go right on about business as usual. And guys, as I say, I don't know how far I'm, I'm going to get into this BS. You can go, this is a long article uh, trying to explain to you why fracking is good for planet Earth. <clears throat> While most environmental groups tend to be on the side of a ban, there are actually strong environmental justification for Biden and Harris's light touch, light touch on fracking today. Hmm. In fact, there are reasons to worry. There are reasons to worry that even a partial ban on fracking could slow decarbonization efforts in the near term. What's more, the deployment of some clean energy technologies could depend, perhaps counterintuitively, on fracking, you know, which is one of the major points 
uh, th that anybody trying to point out the bright green lie of the Green New Deal and, and, and all of these BS uh, ways how this renewable clean energy uh, it, it, it is going to save the planet. That it, virtually every one of these technologies uh, depends on uh, every single one of them uh, depends on fossil fuel development without fracking and oil and everything else there would be no Green New Deal. Uh, uh, okay? Uh, yes, I, 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 I love this as justification for not even putting a partial ban on fracking because without fracking how can we have how can we have clean green renewable energy now one of them they're talking about later in the article since we're here I'm just going to uh, uh, talk about a little bit now is geothermal they talk about how geothermal energy is by some weird uh, following the following the money uh, that geothermal energy <coughs> is dependent <coughs> on fracking which could get me into a whole chronicle of the collapse on geothermal energy uh, you know the last time I was out there at my favorite hot springs, San Antonio hot springs in uh, the Jemez Mountains of northern New Mexico. I'm talking like four years ago when Sancho were out there. Uh, there was uh, all of this buzz going on on how this uh, new geothermal project, I guess it's the Jemez National Forest, uh, I, I, I'm guessing how this giant new geothermal, a clean green energy project was threatening to move in and, and could suck dry uh, these beautiful hot springs uh, in the area. Uh, they would either suck them dry, they would be taken over by the geothermal in, uh, industry and, and all the naked hippies uh, would no longer be allowed uh, to go soak in the hot springs. Uh, all of the pipelines, uh, you know, the power lines, the pipelines, uh, the road building, uh, you know, so that, that's all I'm going to say about it now. Anybody uh, thinking that geothermal energy, now there are some places on the planet, probably Iceland being one of them, that lends itself to, uh, to geothermal in very small ways, but what they're talking about is developing geothermal energy on our public lands. And in order to destroy more of our public lands with geothermal, we need to keep the fracking. I I anyway, guys, the, the, the lunacy of all this. Uh, all right. <clears throat> fracking, which involves pumping chemicals at high pressure underground to extract gas from shale rock formations has driven a revolution in the U.S. fossil fuel sector, doubling natural gas production here since 2005. That surge has pushed down prices dramatically. Yes. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Then, uh, so what they do... In, in the front of this article, uh, uh, of, of course, is getting back to this old debate uh, about compared to coal, compared to coal, that natural gas is this, what is this term, bridge fuel, bridge fuel, that compared to coal, natural gas, which is a 
methane. We're talking about methane here. What I'm burning here, 10 feet from this camera, methane is what we're talking about. That burning methane, the actual combustion of methane, uh, if, you, if you look at it from that narrow window, that the actual burning of methane produces uh, less CO2 emissions than coal burning. Uh, and, and, and this is the total, um, this right here, what I'm getting ready to read out of this whole long article, is when they talk about the elephant in the room, uh, or I should have said the garden hose in the room, and this is about the methane that is not burned. Okay, the methane that escapes from every end of the natural gas process, whether it's fracked or gotten the old-fashioned way, it is, if the methane actually is burned, that's true about coal, this furnace, when it's burning the methane, it, it is producing less uh, pollution than a coal-burning furnace would be, uh, would, would, would be polluting, but the, the elephant in the room is, is how much methane escapes into the atmosphere before you ever light a match to it. I was just uh, on here, when was it? Uh, a week ago talking about this new study showing that uh, methane emissions, meaning unburned methane emissions from the oil and gas sector, well the gas sector, uh, have gone up 32 percent, 32 percent on this planet uh, in the year 2020, even with the corona panic driving down the demand for natural gas, at the same time we have seen demand going down, we have seen uh, methane uh, that releases uh, methane hot spots, as they call them, increase by 32%, going in the opposite direction of the, uh, uh, of the demand curve. Uh, and like a, a perfect example is what was going on, what, what was going on today right in this living room what my buddy and I were doing, we were trying to get the air out of the line between the propane tank and the furnace. So I actually undid the hose from the back of the gas hose from the back of the furnace, taped it onto a garden hose, and just opened up the line. Opened up the straight, pure methane line running out of the propane tank in the back of my yard, which I'm getting ready to get filled again tomorrow, through an open hose going right out the door uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm and up into the atmosphere, right outside of this door uh, here in upstate New York where fracking is banned. Uh, to, to clean the air out of the lines. And, and when this guy comes to fill the tank tomorrow, what's going to happen? He, he's going to get off his truck. He, he is going to, uh, you know, put the nozzle into the tank. And, and for the first few seconds when he's making these connections, and then when he finishes topping off the tank, when he pulls the nozzle off the top of the tank, there's going to be a big methane burp. Every single propane tank on this planet, every single propane tank on this planet, uh, when, the, when they fill up a tank, uh, you are dumping methane. Nobody in the world is tracking this. 
Nobody is tracking how many people, like, like the clueless moron in front of you, are running a garden hose across their, lim across their living room, opening up a, 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 a propane line, blowing propane uh, out, out into the atmosphere to get the air out of the line so we can light the furnace. Uh, so th this is this is uh, Politico uh, nodding towards this. <clears throat> According to the Federal Energy Information Administration, coal to gas switching has driven the majority of CO2 emissions reduction reductions in the power sector every year since 2005. Okay, and here we go. And, and while methane releases are an important downside to gas use that needs to be better addressed, hmm, even taking that into account, natural gas is still better for the climate than coal. And uh, guys, guys, once again, uh, I think it was, when was it, about three years ago, I think it was good old Google uh, was coming out several years ago, uh, you know, blowing the BS whistle on this claim that when you factor in the, the escaped, uh, the unburned methane uh, from the whole natural gas industry from the time the drill bit goes into the earth until it goes in, in, into this furnace uh, here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, uh, it, that methane very well could be putting more uh, greenhouse gases into this atmosphere than coal itself. Uh, it could be, and I believe it is, uh, ultimately because methane is, you know, good God, is it 20 or 80 times more potent of a greenhouse gas than, uh, than you know, the CO2 produced by coal. And, and, of course, at least coal is giving us a little bit of global dimming. Uh, we're not getting any global dimming uh, negative feedback, uh, you know, with, uh, with methane. That is it. That, that is the total, that out of this entire article. And while methane releases are an important downside to gas that needs to be better addressed. That's it. And uh, there you go. And then uh, they, you know, then they start, you know, as I was saying, going on about talking about how we have, that if, if we ban fracking, uh, a lot of these clean, green renewables. Uh, uh, then they get into this geothermal stuff. I'm not going. We've already talked about uh, this. Is guys, I'm done with it. Let's get to the let's go let's get to the very last uh, the very last okay uh, no it really didn't sum it up uh, all right that you know pretty much cheering on the natural gas bridge. But even they say eventually, yes, uh, eventually the natural gas bridge must end at some point. 
Do you think so? Anyway, guys, while I'm over here, uh, I, 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 I could go on with this, but I, but I think you've had your intelligence insulted enough about the nuanced, the nuanced debate over whether fracking uh, should be banned or not. Oh, Jesus. Okay, a couple of more mainstream media headlines. Uh, as the Arctic's attractions mount, Greenland is a security black hole. This is out of Reuters news. Just the latest, and in, in, uh, I need to do a, an updated rant. This, this is talking about the resource wars. Uh, ramping up in gr not just Greenland, but all over the Arctic. Uh, anybody who does not understand uh, what resource wars are going to look like in the 21st century, Greenland is ground zero for this. As, as more and more and more of Greenland melts, uh, uncovering all uh, uh, of this uh, stuff, you know, the planet eaters uh, are, are going to go whole hog, obviously, and then, uh, of course, uh, we, we go from the planet eating to the military implications of this. Uh, again, but it's, I can't get into this whole other rant. Okay. Let's go down to the Caribbean Sea today. Fears of ecological disaster grow over stricken oil tanker in Caribbean. Concerns are growing that an oil tanker carrying millions of gallons of oil could spill its load into the sea between Venezuela and Trinidad, causing an ecological catastrophe. Yes, the Venezuelan flagged Nabarima has lain in the Gulf of Pará since last January when U.S. sanctions on Venezuela made it illegal companies for, for illegal for companies that operate in the U.S. to trade with the country's state-owned oil company. Uh, the Nabarima is carrying 1.3 million barrels of crude oil, according to Venezuelan politicians and green activist groups. That's another word, way of saying with up to 80 million, 80 million gallons of oil, a spill from the vessel could cause an ecological disaster. In comparison, in the Exxon Valdez spill of, in 1989, one of the worst oils was ever recorded. A mere 11 million gallons were released, covering an area twice the size of Rhode Island. We're talking almost eight, eight uh, Valdez, Exxon Valdez eight of these things, 80 million gallons of oil in this giant Venezuelan oil tanker that's now, you know, listing over on its side. Uh, there you go. And of course, this, it, 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 it's also partly owned by this Italian oil company who was not available for comments. Anyway, one more. I love this one. Swelled by rain and corona panic curbs, locust swarms ravage Ethiopia. And uh, you, you, you just, uh, I, I don't even need to do this rant. You can, you can do this rant for yourself. <clears throat> Widowed mother of ten widowed mother of 10, Marima Wadisha screamed through rocks and in her desperation even fired bullets at the locusts that descended on her sorghum fields in northeast Ethiopia. 
but the insect swarms were so relentless that her entire crop, her family's only source of income was totally destroyed. Quoting the mother of 10, they never left for a week. We are left with an empty harvest. We tie our waist and cry day and night. How can I feed my children like this? She said, surrounded by five of them as she held a bundle of damaged sorghum. Anyway, uh, I'm going to stop right here. Remember what channel I am on. <clears throat> and uh, it is not, other than to say the plague of locust in Ethiopia are not a plague of grasshoppers. Uh, anyway, I have, I'm just going to wrap it up here. I was going to uh, run down oilprice.com's weekly newsletter about all of the uh, oil and gas news. Uh, we have added 13 or added 13 oil wells in one uh, big fracking well this week and uh, they're wondering if the oil industry has bottomed out is the big question as more oil wells show up on the planet get out there and enjoy your fracked propane while you still can, although it doesn't sound like there's any danger to your fracked propane, it makes no difference uh, who, quote, wins the White House in this, uh, in, in this rigged election. Uh, it makes no difference fracking. You better believe the oil and gas industry in this country uh, will be uh, we'll be celebrating on November 3rd no matter who wins because Big Oil owns both teams in the Super Bowl. What a surprise. So if you enjoyed, uh, or <laughs> if you enjoyed what Politico had to tell you by giving you your sick laugh of the day, please thumb up this video if you want to uh, if you want to subscribe over here at Collapse Chronicles, that would be great. Uh, and I really appreciate anyone who has ever supported this channel. But uh, the little dog and I are heading to New York City tomorrow to get his little cousin. We have gotten one of Sancho's cousins flown up from St. Croix. I have to go pick him up to del make a dog delivery here. Uh, so I don't know. It might be Friday before I'm back again with my final ecological meltdown roundup rant of 2020 from Bugs in a Jar Farm. Until then, bye guys. That wasn't so bad, was it? Doesn't that furnace feel good? You might be able to take your little jacket off. Now that we got now that we got our fracked propane furnace. <laughs>